Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Yusuf. The horses of the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor and President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sport, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, continued its winning streaks in various participation, which reflects the high level of horse race sports in the kingdom. His Highness Sheikh Nasser said that according to a strategic plan, Bahrain was able to make several achievements after horse Bort Lions achieved first place in the Saudi International Race and Salad the Soldier from the victorious team achieved a new record in the UAE. He added that the next stage will witness more participation on the international level and more accomplishments under the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The first deputy president of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, president of Bahrain Athletics Association and president of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, made a statement on the conclusion of the payoffs which was organized by the GCC Strongest Man Championship in Oman. His Highness praised the competition among the participants and affirmed that the goal of the event is to support the youth and sports sector in the region. He added that he enjoyed following the competition as it traveled the Gulf countries and affirmed the importance of creating the ideal environment for the Gulf youth to engage in these sports, which will develop their skills and present their countries in the positive lights regionally and internationally. He also affirmed that these initiatives that support the human aspect of sports stem from the royal directors of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, which helped to maintain the social harmony. His Highness added that the revenue from the championship will be dedicated to cancer patients for whom he prayed for the recovery and good health. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, chaired the weekly Shura meeting which discussed the law that governs conflict resolution according to the civil service law. The amendments to the law are intended to restructure disciplinary measures for employees who occupy senior positions in the event of their violation of the law. It is also intended to decrease the need to resort to treatment, to terminating their employment, as well as the need to resort the judicial courts. The council approved the draft law to amend the civil service law. The King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence organized a reception for the Archbishop of the Episcopal Church in Jerusalem and the Middle East, Right Reverend Michael Augustine Owen Lewis, who is currently visiting the Kingdom. The Chairman of the Board of, Trustee, Board of Trustees of the Center, Dr. Sheikh Khaled bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, noted that since its foundation, Bahrain has been an international center for tolerance and religious freedom, highlighting its keenness over the decades to spread the noble principles of peace and coexistence among different adherents of religions and beliefs based on the values and principles laid down by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He stressed the role of the Episcopal Church in Jerusalem and the Middle East in enhancing the ties that bind the people of the region and in working to achieve further prosperity based on promoting the civilizational coexistence of cultures and on contributing effectively to the development of humanity at various levels. He also added that the center is looking forward to enhancing cooperation with the Episcopal Church in Jerusalem and the Middle East. The National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus COVID-19 held a press briefing earlier at the Crown Prince Center for Training and Medical Research to discuss the latest developments related to COVID-19. Infectious Diseases Consultant and Microbiologist at the BDF Hospital and member of the National Task Force for Combating Coronavirus, Lt. Col. Dr. Manaf al Gahtani, praised the national efforts in combating the virus, withholding a well-studied plan, and the role of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince as well as the role of the World Health Organization in this regard. Al Ghahtani affirmed the importance of enhancing the culture of personal hygiene and the importance of washing hands to prevent the spread of the virus. He affirmed that there are 85 confirmed cases of the coronavirus and six cases have been recovered and 6,824 cases were tested. Al Ghahtani said that 6,824 cases were diagnosed, 85 of them are positive cases and six of them are fully recovered and added that in the coming days more people will be discharged. He added that the 2,295 people who were arriving to Bahrain from abroad all went through testing and diagnosis and affirmed that only less than 10 cases tested positive. He stressed that there are no cases of the coronavirus within the Bahraini society and no cases in schools or mosques. Al Ghahtani expressed thanks to all citizens for their cooperation in this regard. The consultant of the infectious and internal diseases at Salmania Medical Complex, Dr. Jamila Salman, noted that all cases are receiving treatment and only one case is under surveillance. 
that Under Secretary of the Ministry of Health, Walid al-Mana, affirmed that there is a plan in place to evacuate Bahrainis from Iran. He said that the work is being done to bring the Bahraini nationals back in batches, the first of which are scheduled to arrive tomorrow. He added that all precautionary measures are being taken to protect the safety of all citizens and residents by testing the arrivals, placing them under the supervision of the relevant team, and by quarantining them. The Assistant Undersecretary for Public Health, Dr. Maryam al Hadri, highlighted that the medical mobile testing units had tested a total of 2,062 individuals returning from Iran during the month of February before Iran has announced the outbreak of the coronavirus in its cities. She highlighted that all individuals tested had co contacted the hotline 444 or visited the ministry's website to schedule their medical examinations. She added that out of the 2,062 samples, 2,055 tested negative, with seven testing positive. Dr. al Hadri emphasized that all individuals testing positive for COVID-19 have been swiftly transferred for isolation and treatment, and their contacts prior to isolation have also been tested to ensure their health and safety. She underscored the efforts of the Kingdom's health professionals, who are an important component of Team Bahrain, highlighting the role they play in containing and combating COVID-19. Dr. al Hadri also underlined the Ministry of Health's commitment to ensure the safety of all citizens and residents and added that all tested individuals are provided strict guidelines to follow, including self-isolation and monitoring for 14 days, which they will receive paid medical leave. Infectious diseases consultant and microbiologist at the BD of Hospital and member of the National Task Force for Combating Coronavirus, Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Manaf al Gahtani, noted all positive cases are related to arrivals from abroad or contacts from arrivals from abroad. He added that there have been no local cases registered within Bahrain and that all active cases that have been registered within the past 24 hours have been identified at the kingdom's entry points. Dr. Al Gahtani highlighted that two Bahrainis, a male and a female, have recovered from COVID-19, noting that two individuals have been discharged from isolation after responding positively to the medical care provided. He emphasized that Bahrain's highly specialized medical team is incorporating best practice measures to all its monitoring and treatment activities, from testing to recovery. He underlined the preventive measures Bahrain has taken to contain the spread of the virus, including testing, quarantine, isolation, and treatment, in line with best practices established by the WHO. Dr. Al-Ghahtani noted that the Kingdom's preventive measures have been praised and welcomed by the WHO. The Ministry of Health urged citizens and residents who have visited Italy, South Korea, Egypt and Lebanon during the past 14 days to self-isolate immediately and call 444 or visit the ministry's website to schedule a medical examination. It emphasized that citizens and residents who have visited these countries should avoid interacting with others to ensure the health and safety of their families and the community. The ministry affirmed its commitment to implement all precautionary measures and preventive measures according to the international standards recommended by the WHO and to follow up implementation of all procedures to combat the spread of the coronavirus in the kingdom in a manner that preserves the health and safety of all. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia confirmed four new cases of the deadly coronavirus, raising the total number of cases to 11. Three cases were found in Saudi nationals who had come in contact with others who were infected. The fourth new case, also of a Saudi national, had come from Iran and entered the country via the UAE. Kuwait confirmed a new case of the deadly coronavirus in the country, raising the total number of those infected to 62. The Kuwait news agency said that all infected with the virus are under medical observation in a hospital that has been de des designated for patients with coronavirus. Only three patients are in intensive care, with one being in a critical condition, while the other two are currently stable. Egypt confirmed 33 new cases of the coronavirus on a cruise ship on the River Nile that officials said the previous day had been struck by the virus. A Taiwanese-American tourist who had previously been on the same ship tested positive when she returned to Taiwan. Health authorities found a dozen of the ship's Egyptian crew members had contacted the fast-spreading virus but did not show symptoms. The total number of deaths due to coronavirus has risen to 194 in Iran. The health ministry said 49 more people have died in the last 24 hours. Meanwhile, Iran Air has stopped all flights to European destinations, citing a statement from the Civil Aviation Organization. Iran is in the midst of the coronavirus outbreak with 6,566 infections and one of the highest rates of from fatality from the illness outside of China.
Health authorities said that two Bulgarians have tested positive for the coronavirus, the first cases in the Balkan country. After health officials tested a total of 70 people who had been in contact with two infected, they announced that the samples of a 61-year-old man and a female had tested positive. The National Center for of Infectious and Parasitic Diseases said neither had traveled anywhere recently or been in contact with anyone who had returned from a country with a coronavirus outbreak. The Arab coalition carried out an operation against the Iran-backed Houthis maritime arsenal in Yemen's port district, Salaf, in Hodeida province. Coalition spokesman Colonel Turkil Malki said the destroyed targets were six remote-controlled explosive boats and mines that could be used against shipping lines in the Red Sea, Bab el-Mandeb Strait. He said these locations were used to prepare for hostile attacks and terrorist operations that threaten global trade and marine routes. Lebanon's Prime Minister Hassan Diab admitted that the country cannot pay a $1.2 billion debt due on Monday. He suspended the euro bond payment because foreign currency reserves had had dangerously low levels and were needed to meet the basic needs. The suspension sets Lebanon on a course for a sovereign default if it cannot restructure its debts.